Hello guys, um, it seems like every time that someone has a ranked gameplay, it's absolutely necessary to show the loading screen so that you would just firmly establish that you're playing a more manly level of Gears, a more serious version for the hardcore players, and you did well on it. And so that way the audience is suitably impressed. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can get on with the actual commentary. Um, so, one of my uh, subscribers here, or uh, commenters, um, I see that, that's Carmine going, how is that not killing him? And then he dies. He had had to pause and uh, statuesque protest for a second there. Anyway, but, uh, what one of my subscribers commented on my video where I mentioned Kim Kardashian slightly less than flo uh, glowing terms, speaking about how I did not care about anything that she wrote or said, and he requested that I do a commentary on Kim Kardashian. Okay. So, um, we can list the things I know about her. She's a reality star, um, is famous for being curious, and her posterior is rather notable. And, um, yes, well, I ended the, my knowledge about Kim Kardashian already, so this could be a difficult commentary to, to um, uh, really flesh out. Yes, the puns. The puns. So painful. Anyway, she also married a little dude named Kanye West, of whom I am not a fan in any way. He seems like a little arrogant moron. But they're d they're known as Kimye in the Twitter universe, and people referring to them as a couple without wanting to waste too many syllables. And of course, they had a child named North. Yes, Northwest. Oh, so clever, unbelievable. I mean, I w I would have had to sit there and think for days to come up with a name as, as interesting and, and scintillating as that. But Northwest, wow. The child's just gonna love them every time they their, their, their full name is this spoken out. Geography class will be one continual pun. And of course, if they have a sibling, the only way to bring balance to the universe is to have the name South. I mean, because otherwise, the, the whole, I mean, the Earth's rotation might go off because you have a Northwest without a Southwest, and, and that would be tragic. And good, the good news is, is that Kim, uh, in the one interview I did watch of, of uh, Kim Kardashian, she did intend to have another child, so that can be really rectified. But I can say one thing about her, is that if you're going to have young girls idolizing a particular role model. Well, okay, role models are bad, bad like, for a whole life, that's probably bad, because I, I think she's probably a rather self-centered little ditz, or larger ditz, or curvaceous ditch, ditz. But, but if you're going to have them, at least on the one issue of body image, Kim Kardashian is probably a more healthy body image for young women to uh, strive after, instead of the anorexic, bulimic, you can see all your uh, ribs, looks like it just got out of Auschwitz kind of look, which which tragically really has caused a lot of girls to have some real health problems and probably lowered the quality of life of many others because they have the standard which they can't really attain to very well. And uh, Honestly, I, th I think that the infatuation with super skinniness is, winds up being really unhealthy and all, you know, all it really does is keep make people have low self-esteem and constantly beat them down over an unrealistic standard which is really probably best that you not achieve because it has such poor effects on your health. Women who get down to the super, super lean model level of body fat frequently stop menstruating because they're so, they, they don't have enough fat to keep their body working properly. And while, yes, our culture does have problems with obesity, that is true, the standard which seems to be put out there is unattainably unrealistic. So, Kim Kardashian it looks like a woman. She's actually curvaceous, which is a good thing in my opinion. Um, and before you start going that med has likes fatties, may I um, just interject something here. Beauty is a secondary attribute. And that means that you as the observer decide what is beautiful to you. And so and there's, no one, there's no one person who, who can define exactly what beauty is one way or another. Beauty is basically what the observer considers to be beautiful. And so you decide um, what beauty is. Of course, people's decisions on what beauty is is greatly in, in, influenced by society around them and by the culture they live in. You see that, like in the 1600s, there's this... Um, Ruben is a, a famous painter there. Uh, do, do lots of portraits. And if you refer to someone as Ruben-esque... Oh, for some reason, my fast forward got stuck. I wonder how that happened. Just blipped right to that life. Um, anyway, if you refer to someone as Ruben-esque, it means that they're very, very plump. It's sort of a, 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 um, a polite way to say it. And, <clears throat> of course, then like in the 50s, it was actually ads for women to gain weight. 
for glamorous curves. Yeah, of course, in Africa, you have the ideal of the traditionally built woman, especially in areas like Botswana. And like in 1960, you got Twiggy. And the, the point is that standards for beauty evolve. It seems to me that like, like the most common trend is that whatever is difficult un- and unattainable for that society or that, that, that the society in general at the time is what they want. So if, if you're in, in a society where, mal, where being malnourished is really common, and there's, 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 there's lots of uh, you know skinny, sick people, women around, but they're basically unhealthy because they have almost no food, of course, skinniness is going to be observed as unattractive, and, and plumpness, because it's rare, and a sign of health and wealth, is going to be glamour, glamorized. Of course, in our society, you know, our poor people are fat. Potato chips and... And um, uh, french fries cost almost nothing, and they're super fattening. So it's easy to be fat, difficult to be thin. So, of course, now we gravitate the other way. And you have this whole industry of which is shaping our perception of beauty. And that is, of course, the fashion industry and um, magazines and those stuff. And you're not going to get people to, to buy your products if you tell them, oh, you're beautiful the way you are. Um, you're going to get them to buy your products if you make them feel dissatisfied with themselves and feel that they're ugly and they need your product to make them more beautiful. And that's is, is, to me, it's a fascinating thing with human nature. It seems like whatever physical appearance is the most difficult to reach is what we're going to say is the most attractive. It's this inverse relationship of, oh, if, if you have to have your head shaved and, and a corset on to squish you into whatever shape, then uh, that's, that's what we're going to decide is beautiful. Or, or tiny feet, you know, break your feet in half and, and make it to where you, you can barely walk and are crippled, but you're beautiful. So, anyway, don't buy into it, people. Rebel. Establish your own standard of beauty. Or even better, be beautiful on the inside, which no one can take away from you. On the subject of beauty and actresses, uh, Amy Adams recently was caught by a, a fan sur- surreptitiously exchanging her first class airline seat with a soldier who's coming back. That's pretty classy and that's pretty beautiful. Of course she's beautiful on the outside too, but alright, see you guys around.